Welcome, geometry students. This is Mr. Puebla, and this is the first lesson of Chapter 7. And Chapter 7 deals with this big theme called similarity. As you guys can see here, there's actually a tons of shapes here, and several of them are actually very similar to each other. And that's kind of going to be the big theme of Chapter 7. Um, but for right now, we're actually going to deal with something called ratios and proportions. And you've seen this stuff already before because a lot of you saw this and hopefully remember this from algebra. There's a lot of ratios and proportions stuff going on here. Similar to what you guys see here with the Lord of the Rings image. <clears throat> you see good old little Frodo Baggins right here compared to these large adults. Even though they're actually both the same height or so in real life, special effects art has actually used how to use different ratios and proportions in order to make this effect work. Okay, so that's the title of our lesson, Ratios and Proportions, at the very top, if you notice. And what is a ratio? A ratio, it says, it compares two numbers by division. And so ratios can actually be written in three different ways. And again, remember, guys, if you, I am going to be talking a little fast, so if you need me to uh, slow down, then obviously hit the pause button while you catch up on your notes, okay? So ratios can be written three different ways. Ratios can actually be written like so, A to B, A and then the semicolon with the B, or A over B. And usually the most common way to, that you'll see this on um, any type of book We'll usually write it this way, or possibly this way, but very rarely that way. Okay, so just so you know, the most common way is the one right over here. And so the question is, where do you see ratios? And ratios, like I said, ratios are pretty much kind of everywhere. And you can see these, and obviously, in movies. Um, you see them in real life everywhere in terms of how you're comparing two things, an A to a B. Um, so, for example, one of the ones, that, one of the one ways that you've seen it already is through slope. Slope is actually a ratio. And before I move on, though, let me just kind of add a few little notes here. Um, movie sets. Um, trying to think of something else here that may be more useful, but let me just go ahead and write down like the slope because that's what we're going to do right now. So you guys should remember that uh, slope is actually a ratio. And really, um, the formula for slope, what goes on top and what goes on the bottom? Because that's really a ratio. In a slope, do you guys remember? The top thing is called rise. The bottom one is the run. So that is a ratio right there that you see. And if you remember how to find the ratio in a graph, you'll notice that if you go over here to this graph, we're just going to go ahead and find the ratio doing the short way. And the short way is where you count up and you run. So I'm going to first pick a point here. There's a one point right there, actually. And if I look for something else, there's actually happens to be another point. Where is it at? Where do you see another one at? I see another one right up here, actually. And so I'm going to do rise and run. One, two three, four, five, rise five, one, two, ran positive two. So my slope here happens to be five over two, and the ratio is also five over two, like rise five, run two, rise five, run two, rise five, run two. And I can repeat that all throughout the line. Let's take a look at this example here. This one's a little uh, different. The ratio of the angle measures in a triangle is 1 to 6 to 13. So they kind of wrote three numbers stuck together with those semicolons, but it basically it's like a ratio. If you remember, a triangle actually has three sides, right? So we actually have a triangle that's three sides, um, three angles as well, too. And they're saying that the ratio of these angles is 1 to 6. To 13. Well, what is each angle measure? Now, it's obviously not 1 degree, 6 degrees, and 13 degrees, 
but it's telling you that's the ratio. So here's how we can set this up. We have one degree, one to six to 13. Okay, so we know that these angles in here, we know that all these angles in a triangle add up to 180. So here's how I'm gonna set this up. I'm just gonna basically add an X to these things. I'm gonna add an X here to this one. I'm going to add an x here to the 6. I'm going to add an x here to the 13. And I'm going to add all these because I know when all these add up together, they give 180. So I'm going to work out the math. That's going to be uh, 7 plus 13, and that's 20x equals 180. Divide by 20, and I'm running out of room here. So I'm going to kind of do it over here to the side. x equals well, 20 into 180. James Paul, do your math. Oh man, I'm so bad. No, this is 90, right? 90. So 2 times 90 is 180. So x is 90. Uh, now, if I, it asks you though, what does it ask you? What is the measure of each angle? I don't want to know just what the x is, right? So now I'm going to figure out, well, what is the measure of each angle? Okay, well, simple enough. Just take your 90 and plug it into your original formula. So really, 1 times 90, what's that going to be? Well, that first one's 90. Let me use a different color. So let's do 6 times 90. 6 times 9. Oh my gosh. Did anyone catch that? Yes, of course you did. <laughs> I was just seeing how sharp you were. It's not 90, right? It is 9. Unbelievable, Mr. Hello. Unbelievable. Um, so x equals 9. So let's go ahead and solve all these out. So you have 1 times 9. Okay, the first one's going to be 9 degrees. 6 times 9. The other one's going to be 54 degrees. And 13 times 9. What's that going to be? Ooh, I can't do that in my head, sadly. Let's see. 13 times 9. What's that? Two, seven, two, nine, one hundred and seventeen degrees. So there are your three angles right there. A nine, a fifty-four, and a one seventeen. Those are basically the ratios right there. And it's still set up in ratios. So for example, if I was to um, reduce all those evenly, I'd basically be, be back down to one, six, and thirteen. If I was to take all three of those and divide them by nine, again you would get one you would get one, six and, and thirteen, excuse me. Let's go on to the next one here. So we have a definition of a proportion, okay? So an equation that states two ratios are equal. Okay, so you've seen these already actually. It's like having two ratios stuck together with an equal sign. That's all it is. And you've seen this like this. A over B equals C over D. So basically, something over something equals something over something. And you've seen this kind of like in uh, word problems from the past maybe where you have like miles per gallons and gallons on the bottom and then over here you had miles and gallons again. Okay, so you're probably more familiar with how do I solve these. There's actually a name for it and you, I'm sure you remember cross products property. Basically it says that if you have a proportion and you have one of these that's missing, you could actually solve this in order to kind of uh, work it out and figure out the missing variable. Remember, all you're doing is doing the cross product. What's that going to be there? That's A times B equals, well, what's the other one? B times C. Okay, and that's basically it. Cross product just says you can multiply across and write it down. And then do the same thing for the other side. Multiply these across and write it down. Same exact thing. So now we're going to do an actual example here so that we have something. Let's do a really simple one just so you can get the hang of this again. Okay, so there's my problem. I'm actually going to do cross product.
and I'm going to end up with 315 over here equals 45y. Divide both sides by 45, divide by 45, and you get y equals 7. Pretty simple. And I don't think I needed to show you another one of those, but I'm pretty sure you understand that one. So I'm actually going <clears> to <throat> do the next one that's a little bit harder. What about if I give you, and I think we're example three. What if I give you something like this instead? Okay, now it's a little trickier. But you could still solve this thing using cross products. And let me move this thing out of the way because I have this link. It's kind of getting on my way. So now let's go ahead and solve this cross product. Okay, well, it's going to be a little tricky. I'm actually going to write that because there's two of these. I can actually write it once, but do it to the power of two. So I have x plus two, and there's two of them. So I'm just going to square equals. Now let's do this one, 6 times 24. That's actually 144. You can actually do is, how do I get rid of a square of uh, something that's squared? Well, you can actually do square roots. Square root of this, square root of this. Remember, that's kind of like, you know, when you have something like this uh, over here, you know, and I have you to get rid of that x squared, you're basically doing square root, square root, and then you're getting x equals your answer. Okay, well, it's the same thing we're doing over there. Okay, let me just erase this. Okay, so we have x squared of that. Basically, I'm gonna end up with just x plus two, because that power right there cancels out, equals 12, and now I can pretty much solve this thing. Now, remember though, this 12 here is plus or minus, right? Because really, it could be a negative 12 times negative 12, is equal to that, or it could also be plus 12 times plus 12. It's the same thing, so we have to have it twice over here. And now I'm gonna actually solve this thing. I'm gonna get, I have to make two problems here. One of them is gonna be x plus two equals positive 12. The other one is gonna be x plus two equals negative 12. And I'm gonna solve each one, and I should be getting x equals 10 and x equals negative 14. There are your two answers. Now, I'm gonna have you guys do one right now, and then I will uh, show you the answer just so you can practice one on your own, okay? And this is pretty much as hard as it's gonna get. And I don't know what example we're on. Go ahead and pause it right now, work it out, and then afterwards hit play and see if you got the answer. So A equals 14 or A equals negative 6. Those would be the two answers right there. So remember again right here, you're making two different problems. You're making one problem with a plus 10, and you're making one problem with a minus 10. And that's basically the two answers that you end up with. And it looks like I'm um, thinking that's about it. Um, yep, that's pretty much it, guys. I am just going to wrap it up with, you guessed it, your joke of the day. <clears throat> Who invented fractions, you say? Uh, 
Henry VIII. Good old Henry VIII. There he is right there, leaning in. And we are done. Hopefully you were able to take notes. And again, if you missed something or something went too fast, you can go back and pause and play as many times as you need to. Okay?